Welcome to part two of our biostream investigating dinosaur DNA and the amber that it could be found in. So I'm home from the field site and I've brought in a bunch of specimens. I'm going to show you how I prepare those specimens. We're going to look at some of them and see what's inside. Towards the end of this episode, we'll find out whether that mosquito containing dinosaur DNA could exist at that site. And we'll also talk about whether or not that DNA inside of the mosquito could even be used to clone dinosaurs. Before we get to look at any amber, I've got some claims to back up. In the previous section, I mentioned that the scene I filmed at was what remained of an ancient brackish lagoon. Indeed, this shiny stone serves as testament. This is a chunk of pyrite, a mineral made of iron sulfide. Pyrite requires an anoxic environment, meaning that it can only be formed where there is no oxygen present. This particular form of pyrite is most prevalent in swamps, and the dig site is loaded with it. Pyrite is so sensitive to atmospheric oxygen and hydrogen that it breaks into toxic components not long after being brought to the surface. These pieces couldn't have formed or lasted in anything other than the sort of environment I propose. Next, I suggest that the plants release sap as a form of defense and resulted from the behavior of ancient insects. Occasionally, within the lignite layer, large and intact sections of wood can be found. Amazingly, the pieces displayed here show evidence of destructive insect behavior, meaning that insects were around and active when this amber formed. We've seen the collection site, observed proof of its authenticity, and introduced two questions. Now, it's time to work with fossil amber. I always begin by inspecting pieces at large. I use a jeweler's loop at 10 times magnification to make sure there are no inclusions, which is the fancy term for trap things, on the surface. Next, I sand down the outer crust of my piece. This must be done carefully, as raritan amber, the sort that I'm working with, can be quite fragile. As a last step, I use a rotary tool to polish the piece. This final step is the most crucial. Often, the inclusions I found were completely invisible before the amber was worked to this level. And you can see now that after being inspected, sanded, and polished, the true beauty of this material is finally revealed. But I'm not so interested in amber as a precious gem. I'm interested in paleoentomology, the study of ancient insects. In amber, it's a time capsule, a vessel shot a hundred million years into the future. Its passengers, insects, both strange and familiar, witnesses of mass extinction, of the terrible beasts, the giant dinosaurs of legend. This is why I dig. Because in ancient amber rest ancient things. Things waiting to share and tell their stories, if you would hear them. So there you have it. We have pyrite, chunks of lignite, evidence that insects dug into the wood, lots of species of bugs found in the amber that I have, but you didn't see the mosquito trapped in amber and filled with blood. Until now. Inside of this chunk, in the golden flowing amber right here, right towards the middle, is a tiny mosquito. And as we look at it under the microscope, you can see that the abdomen of that mosquito is swollen and thick. Now it's hard to make out the front side, so we can't see the proboscis that would have been used to dig inside of the dinosaur or any other animal and drink its blood. But this insect surely did feast before being trapped inside of the amber. So we found that mosquitoes containing possible dinosaur DNA are at the site in Sayreville, New Jersey, and that the amber is certainly old enough to belong to the time of the dinosaurs. But the question is, could that DNA inside of the mosquito be used to clone and create new dinosaurs? Well, I 
hate to say it, but the answer is actually easy. It'd be impossible to do that with modern science, and here's why. DNA is a complex molecule formed of repeating monomers called nucleotides. A nucleotide contains sugar, phosphate, and a set of matching bases. Now, the order of these bases encodes an intended gene. Organisms, both past and present, possess countless genes, and so the amount of DNA that makes them, them, is vast. Being so important, DNA is a relatively stable molecule, but it does have its limits. After roughly one and a half million years, the code in a DNA molecule is mostly unreadable, and after six and a half, it's completely destroyed. Even if, by some slim chance, the genetic recipe for a dinosaur remained in this mosquito, it would be so damaged and fragmented that the information gathered would hardly be usable. So, in short, fossil mosquitoes do exist, but we can't use their blood to make dinosaurs. Would we really even want to? What would be the ethical ramifications? Who would own the rights to their genes? Where would we keep them? And what would they eat?